there's a lot of pressure on Ryan Day and Ohio State this year. And I'm very happy that I'm not in his shoes right now. Because what if Ohio State drops their third straight in the road to Michigan this year? What are the implications? What are the repercussions? Well, what do you think they are? Man, honestly, I don't know. Because it's like, okay, here's the two routes it could go. You make it to the college football playoff with one loss. You probably still don't get to the Big Ten championship game again, but you may have a chance to get in this year, depending on what happens, and plus you're Ohio State. So I do feel like the committee has a little bit of brand bias, unless you're not in a situation where you got blown out by Michigan again, as long as you can keep it competitive. But imagine if you end up dropping another game somewhere along the road to somebody else. And then you end up, you know, going to your bowl game and dominating. But it's like, I still don't think you move off from him. Do you? Because it's like, he, he'll he only have like two losses. I feel like you can't move on from a coach that is this close. You feel me? I'm actually in perfect agreement with you, which is why I'm glad I asked you first, like what you thought. That's basically what I thought. That's what I wrote down. If he goes 11-1, and one, and then only losses to Michigan again, the fan base gets angrier. Nothing changes. Nothing. I mean, they go 11 and 1. I think they're going 11 and 1, losing to Michigan, and they're going to reach the CFP, and they're probably going to beat whoever they face in that semifinal because let's face it, they're just going to, they're, this isn't a guarantee, but from how I look at it, they're almost destined to be better than they were last year just because what they have on defense. I have them going 12-2 and two and losing to Michigan once in Ann Arbor and once in the Natty. And if they beat Michigan in Ann Arbor, it'll be the inverse. And Ohio State will go 2-0 and against Michigan in Ann Arbor and the Natty. That's one of my bold predictions. So if all that happens, nothing. But if he loses that second game... Let's say he loses to Wisconsin or James Franklin like waltzes in there and avenges the 2017 loss or Lord forbid Notre Dame beats him, which would disgust me beyond belief. There, he would have pressure entering 2024. You, you can't have what happened in 2021 where like Oregon embarrassed you and Michigan does it. You can't. I don't think you can have that. He wouldn't get fired. He might not even be on the hot seat, but there would begin to be an actual like it, it would it would be more serious than the reaction this year or reaction after a near undefeated season. But that's scary though because it's like what coach are you going to fire that can get you to only your worst season being two losses? Where are you going to find another head coach that you know can come back in and just have that kind of production? Like, are you going to call Urban up? Because it's like, that's oh the only gosh. coach I really know that's capable of. Because it's like, Ohio State, I know the expectations are so high, but it's like two losses in one season and losing to Michigan for a third straight time makes you just say, bump it. Like, we got to move on from this, man. Like, are you going to replace him with Brian Hartline? It's like, it's, it's, who, do you, who do you go from a Ryan Day, who's taking you to several college football playoff appearances, you go from him to who? I don't know. I mean, Steve Dace from the Michigan podcast is predicting that Brian Hartline will take over as Ohio State's head coach after this year because Ryan Day leaves for the NFL, which I, 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 I looked at that prediction and I'm like, no, and also no thank you, because I happen to like Ryan Day as a Michigan fan. Like even, And that's not just because we've beaten him, but, I mean, he's kicked our butt before in Ann Arbor. He's going to beat Jim Harbaugh again. But he makes it competitive. He's a good. He seems like a good person, and they're not going to move on from him. But I understand why Ohio State fans would want to, because when Jim Harbaugh was going 10-3, and three, almost every year. Now, granted, he went eight and five, nine and four, and those were the seasons that really dug it in for him. But I thought at, at some point for me, 10 and three and even 11 and two when not reaching the playoffs was becoming unacceptable. So I can relate to the fan base there, but it is asinine. 
I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Ryan Day's here for another two decades and Ohio State at worst gets two losses pre-12 team playoff, three losses, 12 team playoff with maybe a minimum of 11 or 12 wins like a season. That wouldn't shock me at all. I mean, the, 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 it's my gosh. I mean, I, I don't get why he would be fired. That even that boggles my mind. And then you're joking about returning Urban Meyer. That would just be the ultimate case. It'd be the ultimate case of irony. Yeah, man, it's just that, you know, I couldn't see a program moving off a coach that gives you at worst two losses a season and you're still going to be around there. It's not like he's never going to break through. Like, he's going to have some years when they get there. Like, he's just way too close. And it's like, you know, even the fact that people say, well, he took over Urban's program. Like, yeah, but he kind of did make it better. And it's like, there have been plenty of coaches who've taken over great programs and run them in the dirt. You feel me? So it's like, Going from Larry Ryan Coker Day, being one of them. Yeah, so going from Ryan Day to somebody who can be better than what he's been at Ohio State, keeping up, you know, how good Ohio State has been, I mean, that would be pretty difficult to do. But 